Welcome to the last video of module 6. In the previous video we had discussed about SPI that is software process improvement. Now this is another uh, mechanism or um, a model for SPI that is CMMI and uh, it is actually a better version of the CMM model we discussed earlier. Okay, so explain CMMI in detail. So the original CMM has evolved into CMMI. It is nothing but capability maturity model integration. It is a meta model. That means it has two representations, a staged model and a continuous model. And as you can see in the staged model, it is just like a pyramid having uh, MLs, which is uh, maturity levels from one through five. And that will be on the uh, you know the y side y axis and on the x axis it is the organization and in the case of continuous on the y axis you have capability levels and on the x axis the process areas pa so here you are the differences between stage and continuous representations so uh, in case of stage the process improvement is using maturity levels and here it is using capability uh, capability levels okay so what is maturity level as given on the uh, y-axis so it is a degree of process improvement across a predefined set of process areas so it gives the degree of improvement okay and here uh, capability level is the achievement of process improvement within the process area and organizational maturity which is along the uh, x-axis it pertains to the maturity of a set of processes across an organization and if it is a PA a process area capability it is a maturity of a particular process across an organization this would be a set of processes and this is for a particular process so in detail what am, what are the CMMI levels it's a key to your question important so here also you can see levels uh, from 0 or level 1 to uh, 5 as in the figure or level 0 can also be mentioned uh, which is an incomplete level that is the process area is either or not uh, it is either not performed or does not achieve all the goals and objectives as defined in the CMMI okay in the level 1 it is the uh, performed model okay and um, or the performed level and here uh, all of the specific goals of the process area have been satisfied okay and then level 2 is the managed level so uh, you can see here now level 1 is given as initial or it is a uh, performed level so here what it is uh, specifically is mentioned alongside Okay, each of the levels okay just go through it and uh, level 2 is managed level and so all the levels below that is um, up to capability level 1 uh, has been satisfied okay all the works associated with the process area here confirms to the organizational uh, defined policy so uh, policies of the organization are um, dealt with in this uh, managed level 2 then level 3 so all capability level 2 criteria have been achieved so the uh, level below it has been anyway achieved in uh, level 3 and uh, in addition what is done is the process is tailor made according uh, to the organization set of uh, standard processes okay and uh, next is level 4 uh, which is quantitatively managed here also all capability level 3 criteria have been um, achieved and in, in addition the process area is controlled and improved using some measurement and quantitative assessment and hence the name quantitatively managed. Level 5 is optimized level so capability level up to 4 has been achieved and in addition the process area is adapted and optimized using some quantitative or statistical means okay uh, according to the customer needs so next is to differentiate between six sigma this uh, model okay statistical model we discussed in uh, module 5 with cmmi okay so i'll just uh, brush up uh, i'll just go through it now 
the first one six sigma assumes uh, that the processes have been defined and uh, identified okay uh, so here the focus is on defining the management and technical uh, processes early okay here this is the identification and definition uh, so next point six sigma doesn't distinguish between organizational standards and project processes whereas um, in cmmi the organizational process and all are uh, very much stressed here okay uh, it is to capture the best practices then emphasis on uh, training is done to motivate and communicate skills here emphasis is on infrastructure then relies on statistical method to manage performance okay here statistical approach is intended but not often implemented okay then focus on learning from internal experience and data here additional mechanisms only to leverage external technology okay then uh, prioritization of efforts and links to strategic planning are uh, weak and often ignored in case of cmmi and about the certifications just go through it next is the main difference between cmm and cmmi so uh, you know already that cmmm is the original uh, one cmm okay and cmmi is the uh, evolved one okay which has integration of many things okay so cmm is a reference model of mature practices in specific or specified disciplines like example uh, software cmm people cmm etc okay and they are difficult to integrate there okay now cmmi is a successor of cmm and it is evolved as a more mature set of guidelines okay and um, it was built by combining the best components of individual uh, disciplines which we saw in cmm okay um, then cmm describes software engineering alone whereas cmmi will describe both software and system engineering okay then cmmi also incorporates the integrated and uh, product development and supplier sourcing okay so the next is uh, the people cmm okay that is the next topic in our syllabus is important so it is the people's capability maturity model it is a roadmap for implementing the workforce practices that would continuously improve the um, um, capability of the workforce of the organization so it is uh, the model to be followed in case you want to improve the workforce so here also there are uh, levels there are five levels okay it is almost identical to the previous uh, just a little difference here predictable okay just go through it and the focus uh, is given okay of each level and the process areas are also uh, mentioned okay just go through it next is uh, to describe uh, spi frameworks it's a k2 question again uh, which was already discussed earlier next is to discuss about spi return on investment or roi so mainly roi is um, the sum of the benefits minus sum of the cost divided by sum of the cost into cent percent so where benefits here would include the cost savings associated with higher product quality then less uh, rework reduced efforts etc now costs would include both the the direct spi costs and indirect costs also okay next is uh, spi trends so it just says that the future now spi framework existing ones we just mentioned so the future one should be more uh, agile means flexible according to the customer requirements okay and um, mainly um, it should be that uh, to achieve meaningful uh, results okay um, uh, it should take a short time frame only okay whatever we are doing in the future the trends of spi should be that um, the time needed for improvement should be a short span 
okay and rather than having dozens of key practices okay an agile spi framework should emphasize only on a few pivotal practices so uh, a trend that we would like to put in is um, an agile spi okay which would take a less time span okay and it focuses on a few vital practices rather than a whole range of things okay uh, so this ends up uh, module 6 as well thank you